In this video, we will talk about parking lot design. So, uh, we were gonna look at all the considerations that must be taken when a parking lot is designed. And you might not think about it, um, but a lot of things in the parking lot are very sensitive and matter a lot. So you have to make sure that we have good pedestrian safety, traffic control, and the proper number of spaces in order to satisfy the requirements. So can you think of any parking lots in the area that are like awful? Now think for a second of any, uh, you know, strip malls or parking lots in your town that are terrible. And I wanna ask you like, what makes it bad? Is it a bad layout? Is it a bad, uh, configuration is there not enough parking spaces are the parking spaces too small like what makes it bad and we're going to talk about all the things that should be considered so maybe now when you go to the store next time you'll be able to look at oh that that's why this is so bad it's you know reason x y or z so here's the list of all the considerations that we will talk about today one is ingress and e egress basically the entrances and exits the number of parking spaces used, the size of the parking spaces, accessibility, which is um, the PC way of saying handicapped. You don't say handicapped spaces anymore. You really should be saying accessible parking. The width of the aisle, like that's the drive width. Um, if you have parking on both sides, this is the width between them that you're driving on. Where the people are gonna be walking, where special vehicles go, such as trucks or garbage trucks or buses, uh, where those vehicles will be loading, where they're gonna be, you know, if it's a retail store, where the cardboard boxes will be unloaded to sell the merchandise, where the garbage goes, where the rainwater goes, and then landscaping and lighting. So there's a lot to talk about. Each one won't take that long. I hope to do this in maybe two videos. So first we'll do ingress and egress. So it's again, this is entering and leaving the site. So if you are designing a, an entrance and an exit, what do you think you would have to consider? Like, can you just put it anywhere you want? Okay, no, when I word it that way, it seems obvious, right? Okay, so then what do you have to think about when you're gonna put an entrance here? Well, some ideas are as follows. What's the distance from the next traffic light? Like, what's the speed of the road, right? If I'm on uh, a really busy road like Newman Springs versus a small back street, you know, how fast are the cars coming in? If the cars are coming in fast, I might need more visibility or more room or more of a entrance or exit lane. Uh, what's the distance to the next exit or entrance? Like, if I'm too close to the guy's property next to me, maybe that's a problem. Can you see the site? Uh, can you make a left turn into the site? Can you make a left turn out of the site? On some roads you can't. Like these are all things you have to consider. And a lot of these are usually dictated by local and state ordinances. We're not gonna talk too much about the ordinances regarding ingress and egress. The next is gonna be off street parking ordinances. So this is dictated by a local code and what this means is we're talking about now how many parking spaces do you need? If I have a building that has this type of use and it's this size, how many parking stalls do I need? And that's going to be given by the local parking ordinance. So let's just go to uh, Google real quick. And let's just do uh, Howell Township. I'm going to do Howell Township. And I'm going to do land use ordinance. It came up because I did it before, but Howell Township land use ordinance. And we've done this website before. We always look for the, I'm always going to do ones for ECODE 360. But when we did this last time, we were looking at zones for properties. Now we are going to be looking at um, off street parking. So again, the term is like off street parking. So you have to look for where it says off street parking or you can do like a control F. I'm gonna look a little bit more then I'm just gonna do control F if I don't see it because I can only stall so long. I might have passed it, I don't know. 
off street parking and loading. It comes up easily enough when you do it by a control F. And here's where you see all the different laws regarding off street parking and loading. Um, let's look for some that you might like. You know, here's ingress and egress rules re regarding that. Landscaping, loading requirements. Loading is again where the trucks go. Location where they have to go. And here are all the laws regarding it that you have to abide by if you are uh, an engineer in that town. Here's the dimension of the parking sp spaces, uh, the loading spaces dimensions, all that good stuff. So you'll be using that for uh, the homework this week and again next week. So let's continue. So the code, which kind of, we kind of touched on it already, but the code will give you regulations on the number of parking spaces needed, the dimensions of the parking spaces, the drive aisles, the driveways, all that good stuff, any loading requirements, where the garbage would have to go, lighting and landscaping, entrance and exits, and all that stuff. So how do I know how many parking spaces I need? Well, it'll depend on two things. One, the size of the building, and two, the usage of the building, right? If I'm designing a giant Amazon warehouse, I don't need as many parking spaces as a giant Walmart. So it all depends on the use of the building. So here's a quick example. Can you tell me how many parking spaces a 4,000 square foot business office needs in Tom's River, okay? So if I'm in Tom's River, I gotta go to Tom's River's ordinance. So here's the e-code link. And this hint over here is just telling you the chapter or the subchapter on off street parking. So I'm gonna go click this link. It's okay, take your time. And you're gonna look for off street parking. which is 8.2. And we want to know the required number of parking spaces. So I'm going to look, I'm going to keep scrolling down until I see something that talks about minimum parking requirements. Did it just jump back to the top? No. Nope. And I'm just looking at next to the letter. H I J K, come on. I don't know why it's being this way right now. <sighs> Let me refresh my page. I don't wanna have to redo the video because this is being a jerk. Okay, sorry about this. If you were smart, you would just fast forward it to where I was able to get to where I need to. All right, hopefully it's gonna work now. Okay, here we go. Minimum all street parking requirements. Sorry about the delay. So we are looking for, again, I said that it's related to the size of the building and the usage. I said that I was a, what, did I, what was it, a business? Business office. So I'm gonna look at the requirements for a business office. Business offices require one parking space for each 250 square feet of gross floor area. So if I have 4,000 square feet and the requirement is either is one per every 250, you can just do the math, which would be, what's that? 16 required parking spaces. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about types of parking spaces. Um, parking stalls can either be 
90 degrees, which we would call perpendicular. Those are the most popular size. They can also be uh, zero degrees or like a parallel spot, kind of like when you go to uh, the New York City or like the boardwalk or the beach and you have to do those parallel you know, parking on the side of it. Or they could be angled, usually either 45 or 60 degrees. That's where you kind of go in at an angle and they're typically like one-way roadways. So here's just a picture of each. Here's your standard 90 degree perpendicular. This is the preferred method where you can pull in, pull out, and then go around. This would be you becoming in this direction. You can either pull in at an angle, then pull back out. Or if you are doing a street right here, you might have parallel stalls. So next we're gonna talk about the size of a parking space. And I want you to think for a second, how much, or what do you think the dimensions are of a parking space? What do you think the length and what do you think the width is? Think about it for a second. What's the length and what's the width of a standard parking space? Well, of course it depends on the type of parking stall. What I was referring to was like a perpendicular one. Um, but for a 90 degree parking space, the typical size is about nine feet wide by 18 feet in depth. But this is also dictated by the local ordinance code. And then angled stalls as well. Um, so if we go back to the Thomas River one, yeah, it says stall size over here shall be occupying a rectangle, rectangular area of not less than nine feet in width and 18 feet in depth. So Thomas River does abide by the nine by 18 typical. Where was I? Okay, I don't know how I lost my spot. I'm like all over the place today. Okay, next we're gonna talk about uh, accessibility or accessible parking spaces. So here is the chart that we will use. And the chart is dictated by what's called the ADA, American Disability Association, I think. And they are in charge of making sure that you are not discriminating against peoples with handicaps. Because um, if you don't have accessible parking on your site, you can actually be sued by this organization and then they'll look at the code and say like, look, you did not, uh, you are discriminating against handicapped people by not providing either, uh, you know, parking spaces or proper lighting or proper handrails like you you are going to be in trouble by the department of justice so here's a chart that we're going to be using and it's basically saying um if here's the total number of parking spaces you are required to have overall this one is how many parking spaces need to be handicapped so if i have 20 parking spaces overall one of them needs to be accessible if I have 26 to 50 parking spaces overall, then two of them need to be handicap accessible. If I have 400 parking spaces overall, then eight of them need to be handicap, and so on and so forth. And then as you get down, it kind of becomes percentage based. So that's how you figure out how many handicap spaces you need for your site. So the size of a parking stall, if it's handicapped, you guys probably recognize that they're larger because they need to have like van accessibility. So it could either be um, eight feet wide and then a five foot width in the middle. And then what would this be? Uh, eight, nine, 10, 11, 13. I guess that will be like 11 feet. I can't do the math real quick, not on the fly. 11 feet wide right here and then this is the other alternative you don't need to worry too much about that i'll tell you what dimensions i need them to be i just need you to understand that handicapped spaces or accessible spaces are larger than regular stalls overall next is the aisle width aisle width is also dictated by local codes typical is 24 feet wide for two-way traffic patterns and if you have one-way traffic, it can be as minimum as 12, but usually they'll do like 15 or 16 feet wide. We'll stop there for that video.